Thanks for having me. This is super exciting. The 11T community is uh, so nice. So it's it's cool to be part of it. And yeah, I promised that I would come here to, to talk about previews for 11T and Sanity. And that is a great promise. And let's see if I can kind of like keep it up. Uh, I think this talk will be a bit different, but hopefully it will be a, a great one, maybe humbling. So let's see. Let's dive into it. First of all, hi, I'm Knut. I run developer relations for Sanity IO. And some of you might uh, categorize Sanity as hella CMS. We tend to say it's a content platform for, because we are doing a lot of things. If you look closer at what Sanity is, it's kind of like a hosted real-time document store and you get this open source editing tool that you can choose to connect to it if you want to. There's a bunch of other tools and specifications and so on that all revolves around building with content as data to kind of bring database logic to, to content. And that unlocks a lot of cool things. One of the things they unlock is to, to use that content for 11 sites, for example. Recently, we got this 1.0 thing, at least in beta. You may have heard about it. And that's super exciting because it kind of like came with this 11 serverless stuff included, batteries included. The, before diving into what it is, uh, you pro most of you probably know what it is. Maybe not. I don't know. I wanted to kind of like mention that we had an open house at Sanity where, uh, where some folks from Netlify, including Zach, who is the author of LMT, you may know him, he kind of like presented this fairly mind-blowing thing that brought on-demand rendering of serverless templates to us, at least on, on Netlify. And it was very cool. My thought was like, oh, this, this will unlock the preview problem. And you could kind of like do it before, but then you had to build the whole 11 site for every preview. And that was kind of like not super smooth, but this would kind of like allow you to do that more uh, fine-grained and on-demand. So you know how it is when you are a, are a busy person with a day job, even for DevRels, whose day job tends to be holding talks. But then you maybe start with not that much time before the actual talk, as I did, because I thought, yeah, 11 and preview, that, that will be easy. So I spent the, the whole day trying to crack this, curiously typing, reading docs, and so on because I kind of had the architecture kind of like figure out before, but, but yeah, I kind of like didn't go as I wanted. I, I didn't come here with kind of like the super smooth demo that I really wanted to give you. Yeah, let's, let's wait. Let's see what we actually have. But um, I also want to say before diving into code, this is not Zach's fault, even though he is probably on a yacht somewhere now with all the billions he have earned from these 2 million downloads, he is not to blame. So it's kind of like, LMT serverless is a beta thing. Writing great docs takes a lot of effort, I would know. So whatever this is, it's more feedback. It's more how to think about building things. And hopefully this will also be kind of like a small group session, I hoped. And it also it will be kind of like a lesson about it's okay to not kind of like solve everything and get help. We are not perfect omni, omni omniscient beings, even though we are devils and so on. So I think that is also something that we can share, kind of like failing maybe or not entirely managing it. I look forward to feedback and help and nudges and so on. But let's look at the code. All right. So. Hopefully you can see my VS code thing now. Let me, before I do that, let me actually just show you. So first of all, this is Sanity Studio. This is React application. I know that some of you might have mixed feelings about React, but this is actually an application. Like you use it to applicate. I don't know what the word is. 
it's it's not a static site. It's not a site for for kind of like the world to see. It's your place to create content. It need, it is real time. So I think it's kind of like actually a legit use of React. I don't think we could have done this server side and so on unless you really love page refresh. But this is kind of like Sense Studio. It's configurable with fairly simple JavaScript, and you can extend it and customize it with React components and so on. Uh, and what it does is to connect to the hosted document store, again, with real-time APIs, and give you the human interface for your content. Here I've set up kind of like a blog studio. You can launch that yourself by typing npm sanity, I think, in your command line. Oops, uh, I tried to type in the chat. That didn't work. It's interesting that Zoom wants to autocorrect my NPM to NAM. I don't know what was up with that, but all right, there you go. And that will take you from kind of like a CLI, and you can choose blog and so on if you want to kind of like tag along. We have post, you know, post, right? And we have some fields, which checks editor and so on. What's Kind of cool with Sanity is that you can take, you can, there's a lot of things you can kind of like override. And one of the things you can override is kind of like this, this document list interface, including this form. That is something called structure builder. There's documentation on this. Hopefully it actually is, is good. So you can kind of like follow it along. So I will not go into super detail. But basically, in Sanity JSON, which is kind of like this configuration file, you can put in an entry in something called parts that tells the studio uh, that it should look for the desk structure or kind of like the document list configuration inside of a file. And that is this file called desk, desk, desk structure that I have here. And if you look into this file, you will find something like this. And I will try to break this down for you. So we export a function called get default document node. And this is kind of like a special name that the studio will recognize. And what that does is to let you define kind of like the views, as we call them, that you should get for certain types of content. So here I will return something called the form, a component that are called preview. And what happens is that this configuration will be translated to what you see here, these two tabs. And there you can see that there's some, there's some uh, stuff rendering here, right? And there's a, some other things. It's kind of like, it's me kind of like figuring out if I'm on localhost, setting the correct preview URL. There's kind of like some logic about kind of like translating some data in document to a URL here. Then I used kind of like a plugin to to make it kind of like I have a nice iframe. This is where kind of like our preview will be rendered inside of the studio. Iframes are great. <laughs> I used to build navigation stuff and so on with iframes back in the day. It was a great time. And if I wanted to, I could do all sorts of things with kind of like how documents are listed. So if I wanted to kind of like make a post by category thing, I could do that. I will not dive into that today, but it can be done. Anywho, that, is, that was the easy part because that will let you kind of like create this interface where you can have side-by-side -side preview or whatever really alongside your content editing, right? Let's see. I wish this was persistent. So in theory, you could do this and yeah, it kind of works, right? right? So this is not 11T just rebuilding the whole site. This is a serverless function that's served by Netlify dev on local. That renders this 11T template for me when I demand it. Of course, it would be super nice if I could just type here. The updates would come in the other window. I think that can be done using something like like the, the simple stupid way is to do kind of like a meta refresh thing. I think the iframe can take a refresh 
attributes. It's kind of like simple and stupid, but it would probably work. Or I could probably ask React to re-render this thing when it's received updates or something. That's kind of like a detail. So preview kind of works, right? Let me see where it doesn't work and where my mental model of how 11T like operates with data kind of broke down. And it's too bad Ben didn't have his talk today because he, I think he was going to talk about that. Maybe I would be enlightened. Anywho, so if you go to this post, it has another slug, push preview, it's the same document. It isn't this document. And I have no idea why. So let's, so let's go into the code. So it will give you probably 80% of how you should set this up. And there are some weird things uh, happening. I see things are happening in the chat. I will probably try and go through that later. All right, let's see. 11T. What's so nice about 11T, it's, kind of like it's not a lot of code to get up and running. Let's see, I've set up a pretty basic, as basic as I got it, kind of like a blog thing. But let's start with this 11T JS configuration file that you might know. This is kind of the minimum setup. I could probably have made it or more minimum if I dropped the source folder, but kind of nice to have that. So what I'm doing here is to import the 11T serverless builder plugin. And by the way, I'm now running the 11T beta version. You have to run that to make this work. And I have this add plugin uh, method where I can like load it with the serverless builder plugin and some configuration. By the way, it's embarrassing to say how much I stumbled there because I started setting this functions directory as .netlify because there's a .netlify often. That was, yeah, don't get me started. Watch out for that. It's, it, it is not .netlify, it's, it's .netlify functions. <laughs> that would be awesome for, for maybe LMT to tell you, but, but, but yeah. Then I'm also including this. I'm not sure if I actually need to, but I'm doing that for good measure. Uh, this is kind of like the, the client file that I wanted to have with me. So if we look into that, it looks like this. Setting up the sanity client that lets me connect with the API. Maybe I could have done this actually. And I can return to that later. So I have kind of like my project ID. You can set that to the current date to get the latest API version that's out. Some other config stuff. And then I export it because I might want to use it in different places after. All right. So I have the 11T set up. And then I need some data. The, it's, it's interesting how this data, well, like data thing tends to grow. But it starts kind of like very minimally, and then you have to add more things. But with with sanity, you we have kind of like a primary query language called Grok. Uh, it's fairly reminiscent of GraphQL. Uh, I tend to say that while GraphQL is kind of like a replacement for RESTful APIs, Grok is more like SQL for JSON. So it's kind of like more primary, it's more flexible, it's generic, it doesn't require a schema. It just works on any JSON collection, which makes it kind of like nice to, to use. We offer GraphQL as, as well as Sanity. It's actually powered by Grok, so it translates to Grok queries under the hood. I don't think you could have done it the other way around. How it works is like you have the star, which you might know from SQL, it's kind of like everything, all your JSON documents in the cloud. And then you have a filter that kind of like filters down what documents you want to, to have. And you can use kind of like you can filter by any attributes or nested attribute in an JSON document. And then you have the projection, which is kind of like what the shape of the data you want to have out on the other side of the query. And you can see that I have kind of like something called build constraint because for serverless, I want to have kind of like the draft content and for the build, I just want documents that are actually have a published date that's before now. So I have that constraint as well. 
and we have loads of like intros to Grok if you are interested. And then I have have kind of like a fairly simple fetching thing. So here I get all the blog posts. If we are on serverless, I will have the read token so we can access the draft version. And then I do a bit of data massaging. So I translate our kind of like agnostic block content format called particle text into HTML because Liquid wants HTML. Give it some info to kind of like uh, make it translate my images into uh, URLs. And I do some human formatting of the published at string because I like humans. And then I export all the, the array with all the posts. So this is, this is an array of JSON documents with some HTML in them and uh, some fields. All right. And then we have the, I can, and then we have the, the index. It's, it's fairly simple. It's, it's, I can see now it's even bad HTML <laughs> because I don't have any kind of like layout around it. This is my sticking it to the V3C man protest, but it works, right? It, it works in, in, in browsers, which is awesome. But, uh, but yeah, for demo purposes only. And then we have the, the, I guess the, the interesting part, it's the post liquid file, the template file. I see a lot of people saw the Mercury. It's my favorite HTML tag, I think. It still exists. Don't tell the Chrome team about it, please. So to make this work, we have to peg, paginate kind of like through the, the post array. So we make kind of like one page for each post. So the, that's kind of like this tree, like we choose some data post and this will kind of like map to the posts JS file. And then we have an alias for it to, to where to access the data for each thing. And size one will kind of like make one page for each. What this does, not sure, <laughs> but I saw it in, in, in the documentation. So I included it. Here we have kind of like the serverless stuff. So before, in the before times, we tended to kind of like just pass a simple string to permalink. Now we are passing this beautiful YAML object. It has this build key, which is kind of like what what the what the slugs for the actual site will be. Then we will pass in this post slug variable, and then we have preview, which was the name of my serverless setup in eleven T JS. So th that is this name that I'm referring to. And what I'm saying then is that for this serverless function this should be kind of like this slug configuration. And what I found kind of confusing is that here you use kind of like this variable formatting, I think it works kind of at least. And here you use this kind of like other convention for, for dynamic routes. That is something to be explained, I think, for Levity serverless uh, noobs like myself. And then we have the post. You can't use the slug within. I don't think so. We can certainly try that out afterwards, but I'm not sure if I got that to work. Anywho, in the page template, we can see that we, we have access to this kind of like serverless world. Uh, and here I'm just checking if this is kind of like in serverless mode. There's probably better ways of doing this as well. But when I do that, I have, I kind of like insert this this preview markery just to kind of like remove any doubts that it is the preview document you are watching. Then there's kind of like your run of the mail blog post template. So I hope this was kind of like fairly comprehensible. Maybe I went a bit fast, but, but yeah. And now there's only, I think there's only, I think this is kind of like the minimum setup for this to kind of work. The last thing is that when you run 11T serve the first time with this setup, it will also generate a Netlify TOML with some automatic redirects. You can see here. 
and here you can see my <laughs> yeah this is this is a thing i'm not used to yeah with 11 sometimes you have to remember to clean up after yourself if you experiment here you can see that i haven't done so and that might be the answer for my troubles you are now my rubber ducks i think this might i, I first tried to come like append or you yeah append preview to the slug thing that didn't work so i think i can remove this and this is kind of like what i went for and this is kind of like yeah, just just um, generic netlify config for an 11th design All right so let me actually try and restart the server i don't think kind of like my deletion of this actually has something to do with it, but let's see if that works. No, it didn't work. <laughs> right. And I think that is kind of like where, where I got. So do you, any of you have any idea what's up? Where did I go wrong? I don't. I will just reiterate that I've had trouble using redirects when I do local Netlify dev, like with Netlify right. CLI. Hmm. Should we try and deploy it and see what happens? Oh, sure. I don't know if anyone else knows. Um, does it work on prod? <laughs> But it's kind of working because you're getting something there. Otherwise, it'd yeah. be empty, right? And so I think that's just my failure when I do Netlify dev and redirects. Let's see. Too bad Zach isn't here to fix it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have kind of like since Netlify used to, since Netlify used to sanity for their own stuff, I have Zach in my Slack and I was pestering him about it, but he wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because this is interesting because, <laughs> I'm sorry, because on Netlify, I get this message. Mm -hmm. It kind of doesn't work. So you could be like, this stuff might still be in the build folder from a previous build. So that's why you're seeing something locally, but yeah. not in prod because it's not cached. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. We're that's learning good. Netlify today too. <laughs> I, I didn't do my diligence and just delete everything. Um, oh, but man, so... then you won't see anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So I deleted the site thing and I can delete all the service function stuff. That should like, be the only cache function? thing, right? I think it oh, doesn't generate that. What a Mac Oh, so it, from the dot. If I go at the dev, we will see things just appearing now, I think. Boom. Right? Here's kind of like this route, and this was the route I didn't get to kind of like. Yeah, and it gets the wrong. It, it falls back on the first post. So, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> oh, you are, it sounds yeah. like a, you have to do a USB reset thing. Whoever you are. <laughs> it was a scary robot. Oh, it's right? yeah, yeah, it's the it's the Halloween function in Zoom, right? I'm more impressed with the precision of the audio-only debugging that was just happening right now. You need to do this specific thing. I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> Anything in the deploy logs? Asked Stephen. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, it says published. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh. 
it is going like uh, it's good to actually read the things, but it it looks it looks good. I'm not I'm not sure how it's supposed to look, but it looks kind of like stellar. <laughs> What's your grok query look like, Ian? Yeah, good question. Let's look at the grok query. This is fun to have kind of like a whole whole meetup helping me out. Um, <laughs> that is what they mean when they say mob programming, right? Yeah, this this is like the the user group days, right? So this is the grok query. So on serverless, it will kind of like filter out everything that's not a not a draft, and I think that there should be draft versions of all the. Oh, let's see. Let's make sure. Yeah, there should. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> now there should be drafts uh, versions of everything at least. We have two. We have two errors. We have kind of like the the weird. Yeah, let's. It should be published already. Let's see. On demand builders are a Netlify specific feature. We are unlikely to emulate this on localhost, but I think I don't think we are using the on demand builders now. By the way, so this refers to this thing. So when Eleventy generates your serverless function, you get this index.js that you are supposed to commit into your GitHub repo, and that's the only file from that folder you are supposed to commit. And here you can, if you want to use kind of like on-demand builders on Netlify, you can uncomment these, or else it will just be kind of like your regular AVS Netlify branded Lambda or serverless function. And that should work as well. And by the way, I'm not too worried of us not figuring it out. That is kind of like, <laughs> that is great feedback to just uh, take back to, to Zach. If I figure it out, I can, I can commit a change to documentation and so on. But, but I think kind of like mostly this will be close to the pattern you would use uh, to make this actually work uh, for real world things. It was also useful for, for me as going to develop for Sanity because I can see that some of this stuff could be simpler. It could be simpler to kind of like automatically filter in the draft if there is a draft of a post versus kind of like the published thing. The way we are doing drafts is a bit kind of like, it gets a bit gnarly in some certain instances. So, so that's, that is something I will take back. Could you maybe kind of like have a library that makes that easier for you or something? What I also kind of like struggle with is to, to know if I'm in a serverless setting or if I'm in the build setting. Luckily, Elementy will kind of like set this environment variable if it's in a serverless setting. So you can kind of do things based on that. Yeah. Are people furiously swifting through GitHub issues and Netlify forums and so on? Or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> But what I think is it's probably something to do with, I, I suspect it's something to do with how the, the, the data cascade or whatever it's called, how that is actually operating. If we are able to, to kind of like get to the correct data object inside of it. I think that is what this, this thing is supposed to do. It's kind of like it's supposed to grab into the array of data and, and find the, the slug and return the correct thing based on it. I think that's the thing. I haven't read the source code. I should have read the source code, source code but, but yeah, there's something going on here. And if we are kind of like, if we're giving up, that's okay. It's, it's, only, it's only on the path of this adventure. We don't have to, to get to the, the goalpost, but, but yeah. I think maybe I've used enough time. <laughs>
Yeah, maybe it's some weird kind of like hydration thing in a way. It's making me think. But but that was still really cool. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was fun to, to try try to make it happen. Yeah, I will also share the a repository in the chat room uh, if you want to. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Actually, take a crack maybe at someone it. can figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like Steph also played with serverless stuff too, 11D serverless stuff. A lot of the examples out there are pretty neat, but they are kind of like the one page thing and not this pagination mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think kind of like sussing out the pattern for, for more CMSC use cases is probably mm -hmm. super useful for many. Yeah. Totally. That was <laughs> really interesting. Right. Yeah. But uh, thanks for all the attention following for following along awesome thanks right where <laughs> <Yes>, fingers <laughs>